Welcome, art lovers, to the vlog that takes you inside galleries and exhibition spaces across London, the southeast of England, and beyond. In each vlog, we have a brief introduction to the show or the artist. We then head inside to pick out some highlights before I review the show, choosing the good, the bad, and the beautiful, as well as giving the show a ranking to see if it's I think it's worth you visiting or not. And today, I hope very much that you are ready for some um, radical feminist art because this um, exhibition I want to take you to is by the American feminist icon Judy Chicago. Um, this is the first show that I've ever been to of Judy Chicago, although I'm very aware of her work. Famous pieces like the Dinner Party piece, which is in the Brooklyn Museum in New York. And I think it's the first big show in London for a very, very long time. So I'm excited for it. Um, Chicago is now in her mid-80s, um, and she's really part of that um, first great wave of feminist painters in America that started producing art in the 60s and 70s as part of the second wave of feminism. Um, she's, she's bracing, um, she's not afraid to confront some quite difficult themes and I'm really looking forward to this, to see this show which is free. It's at the Serpentine North Gallery. Here's the wonderful Serpentine North Gallery. There are now two Serpentine Galleries as you can see here in Hyde Park. Do check out my vlog of Guinness Jonabare at Serpentine South. Um, this show, this, this gallery is slightly smaller in some ways. It's been repurposed beautifully though, so let's head in. The minute you step inside the gallery, you're confronted with this work called In the Beginning, part of Chicago's birth series, which we'll explore a little bit more as we go through the show. Chicago was born, not surprisingly in Chicago, as Judy Cohen in 1939. She took art lessons at the Art Institute of Chicago from the age of five and was at UCLA um, as, a, as a university student when she became actively involved in the women's liberation movement. This show is called Revelations and it takes its name from her unpublished illuminated manuscript and the different sections of the show take their name from the different chapters of the book. For me, the first main section, Revelations of the Goddess, were all about Chicago still working to locate her artistic voice. The works you see here from the late 60s and early 70s show her working in an abstract, minimalistic style that I enjoyed. She uses colour to convey emotion and says she showed assertiveness through harsh colours, receptiveness through softer, swirling colours, and the state of orgasm through colour that dissolved. In works such as these, and the works that are to come, we begin to see Chicago um, find her voice more and more. In works such as these, we begin to see her art pivoting more explicitly towards the subject of female subjectivity, sexuality and the body. It's interesting that Judy Cohen became Judy Chicago in 1970 in Los Angeles. Um, it was a nickname bequeathed to her actually by a man in uh, recognition of her thick Chicago accent. And so she used it as a kind of... Um, it's a kind of brand, I suppose, Judy Chicago, a strong artistic name. Chicago was a multimedia artist working in many different forms, but these Broken Butterflies, Shattered Dreams pieces are rare examples in this show of her working off paper as well. And it's really interesting because as you're going to see in a second, by in, uh, the 1970s, she was clearly and explicitly a feminist artist producing um, manifestos and, and ideas which have, have driven her art ever since. And she updates it in um, this piece, What is Feminist Art from 2019? A nice update on the 1977 version. One of the two gunpowder rooms in Serpentine North focuses on Chicago's masterpiece, The Dinner Party. Alas, The Dinner Party itself has remained in Brooklyn and wouldn't have fitted into this gallery space. But we're reminded through an um, uh, extract from a congressional debate as to what a controversial piece this was. 
the dinner party um, it takes the form of a ceremonial banquet and is a symbolic history of women, predominantly from Western civilization, split into three wings, prehistory to the Roman Empire, from the beginnings of Christianity to the Reformation, and then from the American to the Women's Revol Revolution. 39 place settings dedicated to a specific woman or goddess are laid out, and each setting includes porcelain painted plates on embroidered runners, a chalice, napkin and cutlery. We're brought to this work, as you can see, through um, line drawings of the plates, um, and, and we're able to appreciate um, the level of work and design that went into these. We also get to see a test plate for one of the Dilla Party settings, as well as early colour studies of the banners which apparently, and I've never been to Brooklyn to see this piece, but I would absolutely love to, apparently huge banners um, line the halls on the way to the dinner party, and um, you get to see these. There's also a really informative um, video, including some never-seen-before footage, which explains the process of creating the dinner party um, piece, because this was absolutely not just Chicago working on her own. This was a collaborative piece that dozens and dozens of women were involved in. And if you have a look at the Serpentine website, you can see a picture um, of the dinner party coming together. I'll post a link in the video description. The other powder room brings us yearning, which focuses on Chicago's exploration about the male-dominated pyrotechnics um, through a series of site-specific immersive performance pieces which we see through photographs and videos. And I have to say, this room particularly captivated me. Chicago used snow, smoke machines, fireworks, road flares, and other devices to, quote, transform and soften the landscape, introducing a feminist impulse into the environment. Many art critics have said that this is a response to the male land art movement, which was all about male imposition and changing the land and creating art out of the land, whereas this is obviously a much, much softer um, response and an ethereal response. In the main section of the gallery, in a section called The Calling of the Apostles and Disciples, we come across one of Chicago's most influential works, Power Play. Um, it's quite bracing and uncomfortable viewing if you're one of the male art lovers, and that's the point. And it's probably best to left to Judy Chicago to explain what she intended with this work. And she said, male artists have represented women's bodies for centuries. If they could do it with women, why can't I do it with men? Power play allowed me to process the diverse feelings I've accumulated in my years of dealing with men, including anger particularly regarding what patriarchal values have done to the planet, which are literally driving the world to destruction. Another series that Chicago produced were entitled Shadow Drawings and their intention was to highlight the shadow cast on women's lives by the patriarchal value system that they were forced to live under. We also in this section see um, Chicago reflecting on um, a wider destruction. She had a concern for all living beings, both human and non-human. And this series, which you're looking at here, explores and reflects this concern. It's a meditation on death and extinction. And there's no doubt through Chicago's art that she links this environmental destruction, death um, and extinction to the patriarchal system under which it is occurring. Bye.
Um, Visions of the Apocalypse begins by exploring some works from the Birth Project, which you're seeing here. And we've already mentioned this because the work, huge work at the front of the gallery as you come in called In the Beginning is a part of this project. And the Birth Project is um, com comprised of 85 different works created by, by dozens and dozens of women, which you're looking at a selection here. And they were, in Chicago's mind, created to fill the iconographic, iconographic void sorry, of birth in the Western art canon. Chicago argues that from the mythical and celebratory to the painful, if men had babies, there would be thousands of images of the crowning. final huge work, What If Women Ruled the World, um, is also one of the most recent pieces as you're about to see here. And interestingly, the exhibition explains that it came out of a series of banners that were made for Dior, the fashion designer's spring-summer haute couture show in 2020. And these banners were there, were, were, were a response to, to the posed question about what would happen if women ruled the world and they were digitally, quote unquote, woven into this quilt. While I was in Hyde Park, I also took the chance to visit the new Serpentine Pavilion, which is close to Serpentine South Gallery, where Yinka Shonabare is currently showing. Each year, the Serpentine commissions a leading architect to produce a temporary structure called a pavilion, which is then erected and can be visited over the summer. This one goes on until the end of October. And this year, it was Minisok Cho's term, and his piece is an archipelagic void. There are five islands centred around this void, each with different purposes. Here, you're looking at the auditorium, which is a place to gather, to perform, and to talk. There's also a library of unread books as you can see here and a tea house where you can pick up tea, coffee and refreshments, a play tower where the kids can can climb and a gallery um, which we'll come back to in a minute. Um, it's a really interesting piece actually and I found it a very convivial piece to, to enter. Um, the gallery hosts a six channel sound installation called The Willows and Moonlight, and you can step in that as well. But hopefully this gives you a sense of it. Let's hear the gallery now. Mm -hmm. 
as you can see here from these sort of shots taken from a distance, the different islands are of different sizes. And the fact that they were all being used for their purposes um, meant that, it, that the architectures created a really nice airy space full of different colours and different feelings. Well, I hope you enjoyed that exploration there of uh, Judy Chicago's revelations from the Serpentine North. Um, I always reviewed these in terms of the good, the bad and the beautiful. And I thought the good thing about this was that it was a much overdue retrospective of Chicago's work, um, mainly on paper. Uh, but it was really great that she got the due in an institution. It was the first institutional show of her work in London. Certainly that's what the Serpentine was claiming. And so I really enjoyed being in that world. And I think it's 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 time that she had this show so it was perfectly timed in that sense um while she's still creating work to be able to look back over a very long career and so i really enjoyed that and another good thing was that it was free and you can never sniff at that can you what about the bad well some critics would say that her work is not subtle um it, what you see is what you get with it it's not about staring for ages looking for nuances like you might do with some works of art um i personally didn't find that a problem because I enjoy a punk aesthetic, a direct aesthetic sometimes, and I can very much see that in her work. And I also didn't find it, um, you know, I found it really interesting being confronted by by almost like objectification of men as well. I didn't find that too awkward. I think some people who, who I overheard did. Um, so that was really interesting. But I did think that it was a pity in a way that it was mainly paper-based because she is such a diverse artist um, practicing in so many forms. Um, and it left me feeling as if um, I want to see a bigger retrospective of her works, like the one at the New Museum in, in New York, which included, included sculptures and a much wider range and bigger range. I wasn't expecting the dinner party to be transported over to, to Britain or anything like that. I think it's too fragile to travel, although it did come here in the mid-80s. But it would have been great to sort of spread out in a gallery. And this wasn't the fault of the people at the same time. They filled this gallery um, the space, which is a small space, with with um, a load of works but I feel that we are now due a massive full-on retrospective and maybe somewhere like Tate Modern in a couple of years of Judy Chicago where we can see the full range of her work because even though there were little bits of video clips of some installation art and a couple of kind of sculptural works and um, mainly it was the works on paper which limited our appreciation of her because she is a polymath in terms of uh, in terms of her her um, different materials and forms that she uses in terms of the beautiful i had a big think about this and i think i would go with this one it's called woman with orange flares i love the power the beauty the experimentation of this one and i would absolutely love to have it on my wall I was really taken with these works and, and, and the sort of feminising, if you like, of pyrotechnics. And this is a really beautiful work. And overall, with all of that in mind, I give this a 7.5 out of 10. It's on free until the 1st of September. So you, and you can combine it with the Yinka Shonabare show at Serpentine South and the Pavilion as well, which I showed you. If you enjoyed the subject matter of this show, please check out this vlog on Monica's show and this one on Women in Revolt. Thank you ever so much for watching.